Everybody, let's uh, gather together, and um, we are going to uh, talk about some very specific things now. And in the material that you have, we're in number three, the beginnings of the kingdom. Now, what my purpose is in, 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 in these next few sessions is to lead you to an understanding of who you are in the kingdom of God. Most of us don't have any problem accepting the fact that Christ is our King. And, and Christ has authority. But what a lot of people don't understand is that Jesus has given us kingdom authority. And we can exercise kingdom authority. Um, I, 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 the, we want people of God to rise up and use the authority that God has given them. And if you find out that God has given you this authority and learn how to exercise that authority, it will make a huge difference in your life and in other people's lives. Now there is a difference between authority and power. Power deals with force or strength. Um, power means somebody that has the ability to accomplish something. But authority deals with the right to do something. Um, I'd like for you to look at Luke chapter 10 verse 19 just a moment. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Jesus said, I give you authority over the power, all the power of the enemy. Now, I don't know what translation you use. The uh, English King James translation says, I give you power over power. But there are two different words used. And it is essential that you understand what these two words mean. Jesus said, I give you authority over power. 
ขยมบ้านประกอบเอาเนี่ยนั่งอันยาสุดดำเบยกชนะเลือกอมนาย The word authority means the right to do something. เปท่าอันยาสุดคือมีในท่าสุดนักนงการทัวไวมวย The official right to to do something. สุดสลบฉบับนักนงการทัวไวมวย Power means the ability to do something. Power, the force to do something. All right, let me illustrate this from the Bible. In Luke, in Luke chapter twenty, verse two. In Luke chapter twenty, verse two. In Luke chapter twenty, verse two. Jesus was preaching and teaching. And the Pharisees asked him this question: Who gave you this authority? That means who gave you the official right to do what you're doing? Authority is something that's given. Power is something that you you have the ability that you have. อันนี้สุดคือเชื่อไว้ได้ตระบันต้องเอาเนี่ยได้อำนาจคือไว้ได้เนี่ยมี Now authority goes beyond power. อันนี้สุดคือดาวปีกราวอำนาจ And I'm going to show you that this is what God has given to you authority. Let me illustrate it this way. Let's suppose there's a busy intersection in the the city. Uh, you can see the busy intersection in the the city. There's no traffic light. And there is a policeman in the middle of the intersection. How many policemen are patrolling the intersection? The policeman looks in this direction, puts up his hand, and blows the whistle. How many policemen are patrolling the intersection? When he puts his hand up, traffic stops. Now, does he have the power to stop those vehicles? No, he does not have the power. They could run him over. Does he have the authority to stop those vehicles? Yes, he has the authority. The government has granted him the right, the official right, to stop those vehicles. Let me give you another illustration. There is a a football game. And the players on the teams are big rugged guys. And there is one man out there in a striped shirt, and he is telling the others what to do. He is the referee. He's the umpire. The he's the referee. Now is he more powerful than those players? No, those players could knock him down in a second. But does he have the authority over them? Yes, he has been granted the authority. Authority is over power. 
So let me ask you. Are you more powerful than the devil? No. The devil is very strong. You are no match for the devil. But Jesus has given you authority over the devil. And authority trumps power. Now I've heard some people say, but Jesus was talking to the disciples. And that word is meant only for them, not to us. Well, if that's true, then the Great Commission was meant only for the disciples. The Word of God is for us. And I want to say three things about kingdom authority. And, and, and this will set the stage for all that's to come. I want you to look first at Ephesians chapter 1. Beginning in verse 15 and going through verse 23. All right, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. So Paul says, um, I, I want to pray for you. And here's what he prays. Look beginning in verse uh, 17. What did you read? Just read uh, verses 17 uh, through 20. Through 20. Well, we're beginning in verse 17, the rest of the chapter. Okay, give me a minute. Okay, I. Some Yeah. Okay. Ephesians, ch Ephesians chapter 1, in this section, is a prayer that Paul prayed for those people, but he would pray it for us. Whenever I read a prayer in the Bible, I just put my own name in there because if he prayed it for them, he would pray it for me also. Okay. Now, what is Paul praying? Paul is saying, I want you to understand certain things. He said, I want the Holy Spirit to open the eyes of your understanding. So that you may understand the power, the authority that is available to you. He says, I know that you're saved, but I want you to understand. That I want you to understand these things about authority. Number one, kingdom authority was given to Adam. 
Number two, it was lost by Adam. Number three, it was restored, regained by Christ and given to the church. Now this is what the Bible is all about. This is the history of Israel. God gave Adam dominion. Adam lost it. God regained it through Jesus Christ for us. Right. Let's look at this process. Let's go back to the Garden of Eden. When God made Adam and Eve and put them in the Garden of Eden, He gave, he gave them kingdom authority. He gave them dominion over the earth. God said, let us make man in our image. Now what is God's image? Does God have dominion? Yes, he does. Does God rule? Yes, he does. Does God have dominion? Yes, he does. And God said, let's make man in our likeness, our image. And what else? And let them have dominion. Underscore that. He said, let, let them have dominion over all these things that I've created. When God created Adam in the Garden of Eden, he made Adam a king. He made Adam want to have dominion. That, that word dominion means to walk upon. That is, that is it's, it's beneath, beneath him. So God said, whatever is beneath Adam, all this creation is beneath his feet. He is to control and master the resources of this earth. So God graciously gave Adam dominion over the earth. Look at Psalm 8, verse 6 for a moment. In Psalm 8, 6, God is talking about uh, us. He said, you made him have dominion over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. Okay, we are at the very beginning of creation. And God's original plan was this. That man have dominion over his creation. That is God's original plan. Alright, the second thing is, first thing is God gave Adam dominion. Second thing is it was lost. That dominion was legally lost. Alright, I want you to go back to Ephesians 
and this time chapter 2. Now, I, I have to explain something here. We, we've just, we were in chapter 1 of Ephesians, at, and at the end of chapter 1, we saw God pray to prayer. I mean, Paul prayed to prayer. Now, understand that chapter divisions were not there when the Bible was written. In the original manuscripts, there are no, no divisions of chapters and verses. They, they put these divisions in the Bible later on so preachers wouldn't preach too long. Now I say all of that to point you to the first word in Ephesians chapter 3. And you notice that the first word is the word and. He says, and you. So that connects what he's about to say with what he's already said. Look at the end of chapter 2, I mean chapter 1. He's been talking about Jesus exalted. Jesus is exalted beyond all principality and power. And you, he said, you has he made alive. You were dead in trespasses and sin. And notice in verse 2, of Ephesians 2 verse 2 he said you walked according to the prince of the power of the air you were dead in sins. You were following the devil. He's the prince of the power of the air. And uh, by nature, you were children of wrath. You were sinners. Now, how did this come about? What happened to mankind? How did we get so messed up? God made us to have dominion. But he says you were dead in your sins. You followed Satan. You, you walked according to the dictates of the devil himself. And uh, how did this happen? All right, let's, let's go back to the Garden of Eden. Satan rebelled against God. You remember how he was filled with pride. The Bible says he was cast out of heaven. And, and, and he was banished. So Satan, Satan strikes back at God through God's creation. In the form of a certain, 
uh, a serpent. And by the way, that word serpent means a shining, shining one. And, and Satan is the angel of light. So he came to the Garden of Eden and began to tempt Adam and Eve. And what is the temptation? He tempts Adam and Eve to secure for themselves what he had tried to secure in heaven. So he, he tempts them to be his God. To be like God. What Satan failed to accomplish in heaven, he tempts Adam and Eve to accomplish on earth. You can be like God. Why should you have somebody tell you what to do? You, you can make your own decisions. You can be as God. And of course, they listen to Satan's lies. They, they chose against Almighty God. And when they chose Satan, God was dethroned in Adam's heart. Now, remember I told you, authority is over power. The authority to rule, he gave it to Adam. And Adam forfeited that right. He listened to Satan's lies. He believed the lies of Satan. And he dethroned God. And when he dethroned God, he enthroned Satan. He, he, became he became a slave of Satan. And here's what the Bible says about that. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. He said, uh, don't you know that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, you are a servant of that person. When you yield yourself to somebody, you become their slave. When you yield yourselves uh, slaves to obey, you are a slave of the person that you obey. So that's what happened in Eden. This authority was lost. Satan, who failed to achieve a throne in heaven, now has a throne in the heart of people. The war that Satan lost in heaven, he won on earth. He enthroned himself over Adam. 
Adam forfeited his dominion. He gave it over to Satan. Now here is a key verse. Don't miss this verse. Luke chapter 4 verse 6 Jesus began his earthly ministry after his baptism by going into the wilderness and there he had a spiritual battle with Satan in the wilderness. And one of the things that Satan did was to tempt Jesus to, to worship him. Um, Satan, he, he wanted Adam to worship him. He wants Jesus to worship him. He wants the universe to worship him. So listen to what Jesus said, uh, what Satan said to Jesus in Luke chapter 4, verse 6. Okay. Read, read that verse. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, uh, Satan says, this dominion, this authority was delivered to me. Jesus said, no, it wasn't. God gave that authority to Adam. Adam gave it to Satan. And Satan says, Jesus, I'll give it to you if you worship me. But the thing I want you to notice is Satan said it was delivered to me. This, this, this authority was uh, given to me. It was graciously given to, to Adam. But Adam legally lost it. He became a slave of Satan. He, and he lost his legal right to rule. Adam's kingdom authority was gone. And as we see here in Ephesians chapter 2, Adam and his descendants have been dethroned. They're spiritually dead. They no longer have legal authority. So how does the Bible describe Satan? You, you've seen the cartoons of Satan as a red creature with a tail and horns and a pitchfork. In other words, Satan is pictured as a cartoon character. Well, that's wrong. Satan appears as an angel of light. And listen to how the Bible listen to how the Bible describes Satan. Second Corinthians chapter four verse four. 
2 Corinthians 4 verse 4 says he's the God of this world. Why? Hey. Because Adam, who, to whom this authority was given, gave it to Satan. Look at Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. And look how Satan is described in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. The word principalities means kingdoms. And, and he says we, we battle against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay, let's let's pause now and review what has happened. God built human kingship into creation itself. Adam, Adam is clearly portrayed as a king. Twice in Genesis chapters 1 and 2, uh, God gave to Adam the commission to rule on earth. Adam was given dominion over all the um, animal life on the earth. He's told to have many children in order to subdue uh, the earth and have dominion over it. He was given control over, over all the plant life. In other words, in Genesis, we see that Adam was given control over all creation. He was a subordinate king underneath God. God is the true sovereign over everything. But Adam is to spread God's own dominion outside the boundaries of Eden to all of creation. Adam failed. And he gave his dominion over to Satan. Now we come to the, uh, what the Old Testament is all about. <laughs> there is a theme that runs all the way through the Old Testament. God's purpose was to restore what was lost through Adam. And he did it by establishing his kingdom. He, he, he uh, did that restoration by establishing his kingdom. What was the message that Jesus preached? 
The primary message of Jesus when he walked this earth was the kingdom of God. You'll see again and again Jesus said, This is why I was sent to preach the kingdom of God. But that kingdom began way back in Genesis with the establishing of a nation. And that nation began when God chose one man. A man called Abraham. Abraham. And God promised Abraham that he would make him a great nation. He, he would give him a land. And through the nation that he would create, all the nations of the world would be blessed. You can read all about that in Genesis chapters 12 and 15. Okay, let's uh, see where we are. God gave Adam dominion. Adam forfeited it. And God determined to restore that dominion. He did it by choosing a man. And he would use that man to establish a nation. And he would use that nation to bless the entire world. So in the, New, in the Old Testament, we read how that nation came into being. It began to take shape uh, uh, years after the death of Abraham. Abraham Seventy of Abraham's descendants through his son Isaac uh, Yeah, his son Isaac, his grandson Jacob And by the way, this is where the name Israel comes from. Uh, Jacob was given the name Israel um, in Genesis 3.10. Alright, we've got, we've got Abraham's son Isaac, his, his grandson Jacob, and his great-grandson Joseph. Okay, the, Joseph. these 70 people took refuge in Egypt during a famine in, in uh, their own land. Okay, we got 70 descendants of Abraham in Egypt. And there they remained for several hundred years. During that time, they grew in, in vast numbers. And they were forced into slavery. God delivered them from slavery in Egypt through the leadership of Moses. 
And the beginning of the nation Israel, you'll see in Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. Exodus 19, Exodus 19, 6 says that God made a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And a holy nation. And the stage was set for, for Israel's future role as God's chosen people. If you want to know the purpose of Israel, go to Isaiah chapter 42. បងអ្នកចង់ដឹងថាកូបំងចង់ដឹងពីកូបំងនៃការបង្កើតជាសាស្រ្តអ៊ីស្រាអែលអ្នកអានៅក្នុង Isaiah chapter 49 verse 6 and Isaiah chapter 60 verse 3. All right. Here God said that he intended Israel to be a light to the nations. It was to be a bright beacon on top of a mountain to show the nations the way of salvation. Alright, Micah, M-I-C-A-H, Micah, chapter 4, verse 2. Alright, now get the picture. They're delivered out of Egypt. God said, I'm going to take these people. I'm going to give them laws, instructions. I'm going to set them apart to be different. And I'm going to make them to be a light for the whole world. So God gave them laws to guide them as a nation. He emphasized you are different from other people. And as such, they would spread the glory of God to every corner of the earth. You can read that in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14. 2.14. Okay, so, so here's the beginning. Exodus 19.6, a very key verse. God said, today you are my kingdom. I'm your king. So in the desert, God developed his kingdom. Israel accepted God's kingship. They accepted the law that he gave. And they entered the promised land. They began to prosper. The people were blessed. You can read about this in Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 11. And Joshua, Joshua chapter 24, verse 13. They were blessed. They inherited wells they didn't dig. 
They had farms that they had farms that they did not plant. They had vineyards that they didn't grow. In other words, here they are in the land that God promised them, and they began to prosper in every way. They were so blessed that they grew complacent. And things started to go bad. They looked around at the surrounding countries. They said, why do we have to be so different? A key verse here is 1 Samuel chapter 8. Verses 3. 1 Samuel chapter uh, 8, verses 3, verses 3 through 8. So these other nations has, have a king to govern them. But we have an invisible king. So they went to Samuel. Samuel. Samuel was the spiritual leader at that time. And they said, Samuel, give us a human king. We know that God is king. But we want to be like the other nations. Samuel was grieved and troubled. Samuel And he prayed to God. He said, What what should I do? And God said, Samuel, it's not you they have rejected, it's me. They have rejected me from being king over them. But you know, God is not surprised by anything. God knew that this day would come. Before Israel ever entered the promised land, God gave to Moses rules that kings should follow. Read it in Deuteronomy chapter 17. Verses 14 through 20. Dear friends, here, here are instructions that if every government on earth lived by these instructions, this world would be much different. Here's what God said. While earthly kings may rule over the people, they should remain under God's authority. In this passage in Deuteronomy, God said the, the first responsibility of the king when he came into office was, His first responsibility was not acquiring uh, physical uh, resources it was not to prepare for war. It was not to make political alliances. You know what God told the, the first king, the, the kings to do first? 
The king's, first, the king's first responsibility was to get into God's word. To meditate on it every day of his life. And then to govern by the word of God. Now that's good advice today. What, what if our politicians, before they did anything, what if they went to the Word of God and and saturated themselves with the Word of God? And then, then to govern by the, the Bible. And, and this was not a one-time thing. God said every day they should meditate on his word. So this was God's word to the kings of Israel. And if the kings of Israel had followed these few instructions, the entire Old Testament history would have been different. So when Israel rejected, when they rejected God's kingdom, they rejected God as king. They rejected a holy, righteous, pure king in favor of human kings. And for the most part, those kings were a disaster. Read the history. Of, yeah, read the history of Israel. Sorry. Read the history of Israel. And primarily, it is a history of failure of their kings to rule according to God's instructions. There is a phrase that is repeated 15 times in 1st and 2nd Kings. And uh, a phrase that 15 times you'll find this phrase in 1st and 2nd Kings. He did, he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the nation divided into two kingdoms. And that was the northern kingdom, which was Israel, the southern kingdom, Judah. And in time, you know, those people were carried off into captivity. And it seemed like Israel was no more. But God was not finished with Israel. He had made a covenant with King David. He told David that his dynasty would last forever. And that is the main storyline that runs through the Old Testament from the time of David. God will, God will still rule over his world through a king descended from David. 
ตรงนั้นใต้ตัวตราเลือกพันใดนี้นั่นเลือกเอ่อลูกกันี้ตามระยะได้มือรูปบรรทออดำไหนเช่นปีศาจเดวิด And that promise can be fulfilled only by a king who lives forever ให้สกิลสัญญาโนคืออ้ายบ้านบำเพ็ญบ้านตามระยะได้มือรูปได้เมียนจีวรอกกาวจีในแต่บร And in the Old Testament you will find Many, many, many prophecies of that king. Hi, n o k n o n g s a p e r s o n ya cha ne to ok ne nang mo khoi ka p r a k a s chit c h r a t e t o n g c h m u i nang mahat. Okay, let's let's fast forward now and look at the nation of Israel in exile. A lo nang y e n g mo p c h i c h u n i s a e da ban ni de c h e n g tau. Uh, sorry. In exile. You do five minutes. Yeah. Okay. We're about to finish. Won't won't be, but just a few minutes. Okay. ยังเมื่อในขนมการนี่เราเตะบอลไปจีจนอิสราเอลโอเค they were in exile in Babylon เกบานนี่เราเตะเชงเตยในขนมชนบาเปโลน for 70 years there was no kingdom where God was king อ๋อระยะไปเจ็ดสิบสนามคืออัตมีนโกเปรในอัตมีนมหาสัตว์อัตมีนโกเปรกาลานในละพันใดอัตมีนเปรจีมหาสัตว์นู่ when they returned from exile there still was no Davidic king เราเป็นได้เกี่ยวกับตลอดปีนี่เราจะเว้นโจมกันน้องตัดในอิสราเอลเว้นนั่นแต่อัตโนมัติมหาศาล Israel was ruled by foreigners อิสราเอลคือตระบันจนบอร์เตกรุกรง There were the Persians มีนปุเพอร์เซีย and the Greeks ให้ปุกริก and the Romans ให้ปุโรมังปุโรม and worst of all there were no prophets ให้ For 400 years there was no prophet. But God had not abandoned His people. And and Jesus came. Now let me review all of this and give you the story of the Old Testament in about one minute. <laughs> okay. God created the universe. Now the God created the universe. He created man. And he gave to that man dominion over his creation. That, that man forfeited the the dominion to Satan. Manu ko ban b o b o n g chao nei sat am nai nu ao Satan. So Satan was the god of this world. Satan ku chi sai nei k n o n g lo kai ni. But God wanted to restore that dominion that man had lost. So he chose a man, Abraham. Through that man, he created a nation. And he delivered that, that nation out of bondage from Egypt. ตรงก็ตามในยาอับราฮัมนอมปจิจุนอิสราเอลนอมปจิจุนบอกตรงอมิสไรพีบ In the wilderness he said you are to be a light to the world นาทีเวลาหาทานตรงบ้านประกาศทานเนี่ยไอ้ตรายตะคลายตะจีบฝนลื่นในโลกี I have set you apart ยมบ้านแย่งแน่เจงดักติเก I've created you for this purpose ยมบ้านประกาศเนี่ยไอ้นำไปกลมองนี่ You are to be a light to the whole world to show them the way of salvation. So you've got this nation, Israel. They enter the land that God had promised them. They didn't follow God's instructions. So they demanded their own way. God said, "All right, uh, I've already made provision that you will have kings, and they should govern by the instructions that I've given them." Okay, I don't want to go back. I don't mean that. That's not the way. I go through that. Who are the ones that are not the ones? But there was rebellion and corruption. The people were taken away into captivity. 
And it appeared that Israel was no more. But God had a remnant. He had told David that he, he would establish a kingdom to be ruled by uh, uh, David for eternity. During the exile, the, the, the people began to, to hope for this deliverer who would uh, uh, reestablish David's throne. And we're going to see that they expected the Messiah to raise up an army and uh, uh, establish Israel as a dominant nation. And this is why they missed Jesus when he came. Uh, so now we've got things ready for the coming of Jesus. God providentially arranged the time for Jesus to come into the world. And, and Jesus came saying, the hour has come. The, the kingdom of God is here. So in the uh, ensuing lectures, we're going to talk about how we're in the kingdom right now. And we're talking about life in the kingdom right now. And then the culmination of the whole thing when Jesus comes. Okay, thank you very much. You're you're very good. The only person I saw snoozing was Gary over here. <laughs> uh, thank you so very much. It is, it is a joy and a blessing for me to be talking to you.